Okay, somebody wanted to know how I seal my signs. And I do it a few different ways. A lot of it just depends on my mood, honestly. Um, this is Dixie Belle top coat. This is the top coat I use the most. Um, okay. Uh, and it is clear coat in satin. So I'm just gonna brush it on to these cute little signs here. And that was plenty there. Do not need that much. And I have plenty on my brush, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the outsides too. I don't always do the outsides. Again, kind of uh, depends on what kind of mood I'm in. But honestly, a lot of the time I just spray seal my signs anymore. It's just quicker. And, you know, most of these signs are going to be in the house. Or at least that's what I'm thinking. They're going to be in the house. So anyway, there's that one is sealed. Pop that up there. And then, um, well, hello, Lisa Kennedy. Same here. Rainy, blustery, nasty. Okay, and then we have this one. I'm just gonna spray this one. This is pretty much how I normally do it anymore. I wouldn't normally do it in here, but for the sake of uh, showing you guys, I'm gonna. It is just um, fast drying polyurethane. So, just make sure your stream's coming out good and that's it. So you can see that's a lot faster, does not involve a brush, does not involve having to, hey Colleen, does not involve having to uh, wash a brush or any of that stuff that I don't like to do. Okay, so that's, that's typically how I seal anymore. Hey Sandy, oh it's sunny in Florida. <laughs> we could use a little sunshine, it's been nasty this week. Just downright nasty. Okay, so. I can't remember who, I want to say it was Rebecca, somebody wanted me to show how I seal. So anyway, that's that. Hey, Susan. Oh, you're getting snow too. We're, we, we're not having any snow that I'm aware of. I just see a lot of rain. Actually, I'm going to set this back down for a minute. Um, polyurethane or polycrylic? Um, that was polycrylic. That was just a top coat by Dixie Bell. Was the one I brushed on. And then... It's a fast drying polyurethane is what I use in the can. But then for this metal can, <laughs> I'm gonna use fast drying polyurethane in here. And I could spray it also. Thank you for the stars, you guys. Um, I just feel like this is more durable. I'm not a scientist, I don't know. But I feel like this would have to be more durable than the spray. Just my thoughts. Making your own sunshine in Ohio. Appreciate my videos. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. That makes it worthwhile for me to know that someone enjoys it. Even if I come on looking a mess. Do you ever have trouble with polyurethane yellowing? Um, polyurethane will yellow, yes. Which, for what I'm using today, um, actually, I have not. I don't know if I've had any trouble with this on a sign, but I don't know if I've used it on white. I don't know. I don't do a lot of white signs, I guess, honestly. Have you ever used the wipe on poly? Nope, I haven't. Well, that's just it. There's so many things out there that you can use. I just, you know, I get in a habit. I like what I use, so I stick with it if I like it. <laughs> Thank you, Veronica. I'm going to pour some of this in a, in a little bowl here. Okay, so that way I will get my lid put back on later. You don't like polyurethane special? Yes, you can't use polyurethane on a light covered surface or light painted surface because it will yellow. It, that's just it, it's fact. Um, that's when you wanna use a polyacrylic, a water-based product, not oil-based. Faux show. Yeah, I, like I said, I don't do many white signs. You know me, if I do a sign with white, it's got a lot of antiquing on it and a lot of brown in it, so. Um, but they do have, um, they do have polycrylic in a spray can by Minwax also that's in the bluish can like the polycrylic comes in. 
you know, they both come in a can. One's a spray, one's the quart or gallon or whatever you get. But, um, and that one would be water-based and that one should be a sure thing. Okay, now we're getting back to this. Okay, I've told you what I'm using. Oh, oh shoot, I used a new paintbrush. Doggone it. <laughs> I have brought one in. Well, let's just check on it. This is one I've had in the freezer and I've used it several times because you know me, I don't like to wash a paintbrush. And plus, oh yeah, it still works. Well, I could have used this one, e gloppy as it is, but stupid me, did not see it sitting there. So here we are. I'm getting, I'm using, well, it's not a new paintbrush, but once you use an oil-based product for me, there's no coming back. It's either getting pitched or it's kept for this forever now. I'm not gonna put that kind of effort into trying to clean it out. Just not enough hours in the day for me. So anyway, just sealing that. Can you, let me turn you around a little bit. There we go. Okay, so there we go. Just putting this on. If you saw me, oh, this isn't even the can that I was meaning to do. Good grief. This one, actually, I have already sprayed with um, the other, with that spray polyurethane. But I didn't love it. It did darken it enough, but so all is not lost. This one needed to be done too, in my opinion. So you can see how much more of a shine, gloss, coverage this is, because this is going right over the spray polyurethane, if that makes sense. Round brush versus standard is the preference over one over another. Why? Um... I have used like a two inch, pretty much, like, I think this is two and a half inch. This is bigger than I need. Um, I bought these off Amazon on accident, so I'm determined to use them up. But a two, a two inch angled brush has always been my personal fave. Um, of course there's wax brushes. And if you're doing wax, I would probably use the wax brush. Um, but I am kind of falling in love with the stale meesters. They're kind of around, they hold a lot. I like the cling on too, but I've been going back and forth between the two and I think, I think the stale meesters are winning out with me. And I would love to be able to sell those to you guys, but I've not found an easy way to do that. I think you have to be a paint retailer and I really don't wanna go back down that road too bad. I don't wanna to have to stock all that inventory. I don't have room for that nor the time, nor the desire to ship all that, so. But yeah, I think a lot of it is personal preference. Like I said, I've gotten by with a two inch angled brush for 10 years. I shouldn't say gotten by, that's what I liked. But lately I've been experimenting a little and I am liking some of the other fancier brushes too. Sarah likes round ones on furniture, but use flat for top coat. That's a good, yes, I can see that. That makes a lot of sense. Um, she said she likes the flat ones for the top coat, the flat surfaces on the top and the round ones for the rest of the piece. So I guess since I messed up, where is that other can? I knew something didn't seem right when I kept looking at this. I bet he took it out in the other room because it was so rusty. It was rusting everywhere, but I'm going to try to grab it real quick. Courtney, if you're watching and can pop out here and grab it for me, that'd be great. I'm assuming it's just next door in the other garage. I just need somewhere to hold on to here. And I need to get my work area cleaned off. It's hard to get some of these projects in. This one's not huge, but it's hard to get them in the camera view. And then I get to work in at a different spot in here and all my stuff ends up in one spot, then it's easier to work here and yada, yada, yada. So I'm all over the place. But I am, I love the look of this rust once you seal it. I mean, I liked it before, but it wasn't as rich and rusty burgundy as what I tend to like. But if you had seen it before I spray sealed it, that made a world of difference too. This is just another level. 
And some people don't like it that dark. It doesn't look as rusty anymore to them. But I'll take pictures once it dries and you can get a better feel for it then. Let me set that down. Courtney must not be watching. Please hold while I grab the intended project. Okay, it was right around the corner. Okay, this was the one I meant to be doing today, but it's all good. So you can see where I got confused, right? Just say yes, it's okay. Okay, so this one has not been sealed at all. This one is a family heirloom that we stenciled on the other day. Has the plaque up here that I've just been dying to seal so that it'll show up better. This was Greg's uncle. I just happened to mention to him the other day that, hey, don't we still have some milk cans with um, family? Uh, I call it a placard. I don't know what it's supposed to be. Plaque, whatever that thing is. And sure enough, a couple days later, he pops in with one. Now this one is rusty as all get out. Thanks, Jerry. Um, it's got holes. It's dropping rust out from underneath. It's rusted through. But, you know, it's still cool to me. You know, pop a little potted plant on top there or take the lid off and put some uh, stemmed flowers in it even. Long stemmed from like Hobby Lobby or something. Or fill it with rock or sand or something in the bottom. Or tissue paper or old newspaper or whatever if you didn't want to fill it all the way to the bottom, you know. Put a false bottom in there if you will. Okay, this is going a little slow here around the handle, obviously, this tedious work. But I think it's going to be worth it. Can you see how that's coming out? I hope. And it may not be your style. I think it is mine. <laughs> Just what I needed. One more piece in my house. But, and I might put it on the porch too. I don't know yet. No real plan yet. Okay, let's get to, um, oops, I was wanting to get that just out of here. Okay. When this dries, will it dry shiny? I am a lover of rust. Um, this is satin, so it might have a little, to me, satin, it's definitely not glossy. I don't know that I would call it shiny either. To me, it gives it enough of a protection that you can run your hand over it like a dust rag or something and it's not gonna drag on it and catch, which is kind of like, I know some people don't spray their signs and that's fine to each their own, but I like to just because to me it feels dry and like your dust rag is gonna catch on it when you dust it. And um, so yeah, that's kind of the same thing with this. And I really think this dry, rusty goodness is going to um, win out over the clear coat or over the polyurethane. I think, I mean, I could put several coats on and make it shiny, which I don't want that either. Or I could have just went straight to gloss. But as dry as this thing is, I think it's gonna be perfect. Perfect in my eyes anyway. So we'll see. I will take pictures after they dry. And that may be tomorrow because, like I said, rainy, nasty, blustery here. I don't have the heat on in the garage here or it would dry faster. Well, I could take them in the house actually and put them by um, the heat register. You love this piece? I'm coming in on the back end of this. Did you do a live? I did. Um, it was probably day before yesterday. I did a live on this. Um, ugh, see all that rusty? I'm not calling that rusty goodness, but that's rust. <laughs> and you can see, like I said, this is not in pristine shape by far. And it is, I'm gonna have to take it outside and shake it out some more. And really, yeah, this just may stay on the porch because I have a feeling it will always wanna drop some out. Or I could put a kind of, I see those, um, maybe you guys have tried it, um, sealer that you're supposed to be able to put on a boat and it's supposed to seal up the hole. I can't really imagine that works, but it could do something like that if you want to go to that extreme, but 
For me, it'll probably, it'll probably go out on the front porch. So, sorry this is kind of boring to watch. A little cobweb in there. I always say that I feel like watching me paint has to be as boring as watching paint dry. Which this isn't painting, I realize, but you know, same idea. But I do love me a transformation, so. Once you can, I mean, let me get this turned again a little bit. You can definitely see what we're doing, right? I can get the other side of that handle now. Get around the lid a little bit. Like I said, I will take pictures when it's all dry. It will stay fairly dark like this, but I don't think it'll look shiny. I don't think, but we'll find out. I am using, let's see, aim your hair dryer in that hole. Oh, that's a good idea, Sandy. Yeah, I, well, I can't do it outside today, but yes. I will maybe try that. Actually, I might even have Greg take it outside with the uh, air compressor and really do a number on it. Of course, that might just blow a hole right through it or make the hole bigger, so maybe I just better stick with the blow dryer. And my hand is wearing out. A little tricky to get in here. You know, I always wonder why they, you know, make those weird angled brushes. Well, this project, <laughs> I could see where a different angle would help in, at some points here. But there again, I wouldn't want to clean another brush, so I still wouldn't use it probably. Okay, let's finish up down here. Oh, I'm sorry, somebody asked what I was I using. I, th I don't know if I remember if I answered or not, but this is just polyurethane. Um, just good old fast drying polyurethane there by Mint Wax. So just kind of seal that rust in. And yes, there is a, I did do this, um, the stencil live on here a couple days ago. So it is on my flipping furniture page. If you scroll down a little bit. And then, yeah. I feel like there was more to that sentence, but I don't know what it was. This has been, well, like I said, I think I say all that in the video, that this was washed, sanded, washed again, and then stenciled. And then it's been a couple days ago. We had to go out of town yesterday, so. I'm just getting back to it today. And I did, I was going to put down a, um, a piece of craft paper or something or cardboard even underneath this so that when I try to do this bottom, I don't pick up the gunk that's on my table, but again, I forgot, so. But that would definitely help not pick up any extra particles. And I think I actually picked up a little bit of the rust and it's kind of showing up on the white just a little bit, which I think it looks good, so I'm just gonna go with it. Okay. And I'm finding these handles are much like spindles. Seems like every time I turn it a little bit more, I find another spot that I missed. Okay, I'm gonna get up in here on the top and finish it up too real quick. Okay, like I said, totally not in good shape, but I, I think it's worth keeping, especially for the, you know, sentimental value alone, since it is um, Greg's uncle, Virgil. So you probably, I'm sure you can't see it, but it does say Virgil. I can't see, I think it says Virgil L. Holes, Carthage, Illinois. I'm not going to strain my brain to try to read the rest of that. 
But I wondered about dragging white paint across there to make that detail pop out. I might do that yet. But I'm gonna let this dry first and see what my husband thinks. If he can read it better than I can, I'll leave it alone. Otherwise, I might try that later or in a day or so, whenever this is good and dry. Yeah, I kinda need this to dry enough for me to pick it up, otherwise I'm gonna be all sticky. Okay. Okay, I think, I think I've touched it all. A little bristle there. Okay, I think that's it for today's installment of this hot mess. Oh, there was a couple little places I missed there. Let me double check. There was a little divot there that I didn't get the uh, polyurethane in. And there's a couple um, bristles floating around in there. Okay. And on the back of this, oh, is this another chain? Or the same chain. I'm trying to get it a little bit too. Sorry, you guys can't see that. And there, doggone it, is another place on this handle that I missed. Okay. Okay, I think I'm gonna quit there. For real. Okay, on the back it says something else too. And this, again, I thought about trying to highlight with some white paint to make it show up better. Forest Hill Dairy. I don't know what the rest of that says. And something is kind of etched into it, but I can't tell what that says either. So anyway, that's it for today. <laughs>